Good morning, everyone. This is One Pretty Ricky, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are here at the KRFF Studios, 95.9 LPFM, Moorhead Fargo. Uh, this is the F5 Recovery Radio. Uh, of course, this is your co-host, One Pretty Ricky. I'm joined with Kirsten Uvenin, and our lovely co-host, Adam Martin, is coming. As yeah. he said. He had you know, to drop the kids off, drop which the kids is good. Off. You know, that's good. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to leave those on. Yeah. yeah. So we're just uh, really happy to be able to do this show every week. And we're just really appreciative of everyone who tunes in and who shares some time with us. Um, today's show is going to be a little, um, I don't want to say necessarily different, but definitely a little bit heavier of a topic. Um, so for those who've never listened to our show before, um, it's in the title, F5 Recovery Radio. We talk about all things recovery as it relates to our journeys, as it relates to family members and those connected with those who may be in recovery, um, but we have sustained or really our whole community of Fargo um, and kind of the surrounding areas has sustained a, a pretty significant loss uh, over the past uh, on Friday. Um, and so we wanted to kind of talk, tackle grief and loss. And so I wanted just to read a little bit uh, for those who may be unaware or those who may be listening on Facebook and don't necessarily know what happened. Um, this past Friday, uh, the Fargo Police Department uh, responded to a an incident, and I just want to read just a few words um, that they've that the Fargo PD has kind of shared. Uh, so, on July 14th, a critical incident occurred near Ninth Avenue South and 25 25th Street South in Fargo. Fargo Police Officer Jake Wallen, a native of St. Michael, Minnesota, was fatally shot in the incident. Wallen, a graduate of Alexandria Technical Community College and an in- attendee of the American Military University, served in the Minnesota Army National Guard and had professional experience in the security sector. Jake was a graduate of Fargo Police Academy 4 and became an FPD officer on April 19, 2023. On that day, he was sworn into law enforcement by Fargo Police Chief Dave Zablowski and his badge was pinned onto him by his father, Jeff. Jake was in field training with the FPD at the time of his death. When asked to describe his interest in law enforcement, Jake stated that being an FPD officer was an exciting opportunity to truly make a difference in his community. Officer Wallen was 23 years old. Fargo Police Officer Andrew Dotis is a six-year FPD team member. Dotis served as an FPD training officer, a member of the crowd management team, Red River Valley SWAT negotiations team, and a department motorcycle officer. Dotis is also a member of the National uh, North Dakota Air National Guard. And then finally, Fargo Police Officer Tyler Hawes was Wallen's classmate in FPD Academy 4, becoming an FPD officer on April 19, 2023. He's currently completing FPD field training. Hawes attended the University of Minnesota Morris and graduated with a degree in psychology. Prior to joining FPD, he worked as a corrections officer. Dotis and Hawes sustained gunshot wounds are and I believe are still in critical, stable conditions with serious injuries at a local health care facility. And so it's just uh, quite pretty traumatic, um, this, this turn of events and, and different things. And I think it just speaks to um, just the hardship of, of not only what these officers and, and what our whole police force are, are trying to help address in our community, but just a lot of the sickness that's unfortunately going on as well. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, it's devastating. I mean, it's devastating any any time um something like this happens, but it's uh you just it makes you afraid like could that have been my kid? Could you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It makes you think all of those things and uh your my heart breaks for the family of all of those that lost their lives and uh, it's just huge. It really mm-hmm. is a big deal. And I think with grief, grief is so odd. And ironically enough, um, on Monday, which was two days ago, not yesterday, mm-hmm. um, we buried my uncle and he died of alcoholism. Mm-hmm. And he died in Texas. And then um, they sent his remains up here and we buried him uh with his parents or with my grandparents anyway and it just made it very it just makes it very real that Mm -hmm. uh fortunately my brother and i are both in recovery and just to watch my mom bury her brother and then be so grateful that her kids you know have sobriety and at least for now you know what i mean there are no guarantees i guess but uh it just makes it very real and they're 
It seems like in obits, there's it never really says like died of alcoholism or you know mm -hmm. what I mean. It just doesn't yep. or died of mental health or died of you know what I mean. All of these things that are the real issue, which I think perpetuates the stigma. You know what I mean. But grief is so bizarre. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you're you can see their picture and just be like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, they were so great, and then. An hour later at a stoplight, I lose my mind. I'm bawling my eyes out. It's just right. like, the it's so crazy. But And it's really, for people in recovery, uh, because addiction really has nothing to do with the chemical. It has everything to do with like the inability to live life on life's terms and Absolutely. to work through these feelings and not yep. become the feeling. Like, mm -hmm. just let, let the grief just be, pass through you and... And you don't have to become that and um, try and not feel stuff. Right. That's not, you know, feel it. Just mm -hmm. feel all the things and talk to people and don't get stuck there. It just makes it, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that you mentioned about not getting stuck there because I think that's one of the hardest things to, when you're processing through grief and loss, to to know like how long how long it's going to last mm -hmm. how long that grief is going to last because you know I've had significant people and significant loss um, prior to recovery and just you know close friends and family members and, and or different ones and it was just weird like it, it just happened so fast I remember like crying you know crying a lot at the funeral differently like you know when you're in the moment but then it was weird because, you know, after the fact, I kind of just went back to my normal, which was right. gambling. And I just was like, OK, well, this is how I'm going to process through this. Right. And so now I have a different, not necessarily or a different urge, but it was like, OK, well, now I'm going to deal with this through the only way I know how. Right. And I'm going to just keep perpetuating the same thing that I know is a problem. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to dive even deeper into this thing into this problem and you know it can be for different things for different ones but it was i didn't want to have more i didn't want to cry anymore i didn't want to yeah. be sad anymore i was just tired of it so i was like okay well if i'm going to be sad i'm going to be in control of my sadness so i'm going to just you know throw it down on the tables or whatever it was and i was like okay if i lose then you know this is why i'll be sad but if i win then okay well at least this will get me out of this rut and it was just and it was, oh man it was just just thinking back now of and I remember s some specific people that have passed and that, that, you know, I remember, you know, it's like, OK, I know what I'm going to. I know. And I knew immediately what I was going to do. As soon mm -hmm. as I heard the news, I was devastated. I cried. And then I was like, OK, well, let's all right. Let's let's, you know, let's fix this. Yeah. And that, you know, I can't bring them back, but I can certainly just go out. And man, it was. And the irony is that you felt like you wanted to be in control. So you were just going right. to go gamble because that's totally <laughs> right. in control yeah and you really had that whole thing under control yep. mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah it is and it's at the time at least when i was using if something like that happened it was a green light to go use and not have people say like oh i think you're overdoing it mm -hmm. or maybe you should cut back or all those dumb things you hear <laughs> uh you know because then it was like well, look what happened. Right. Not that I needed a reason, like if it was Monday, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or two, mm -hmm. if it was a good day, if it was a bad day, if it was just a day, yep. whatever. Um, but it kind of like, you know, towards the end of my using, it, the heat was off for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I had a reason, I had a buy. Yep. And then I felt even dirtier for yes. using that as my yes. excuse. And it mm -hmm. just was like, oh, how did I become this person, you know? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, like my kids are always like, life's not fair, and life's not fair. Mm -hmm. It it really sometimes doesn't go the way you thought it was gonna go, and sometimes that can be great, and sometimes it can be um, really traumatic, and uh, it's just hard to see that there's an there's another side of this when you're in it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's hard to listen to people when they're like, hey, maybe you should get out of bed, or you know what I mean, stuff right. like that, I'm like. Well, that's good for you. You know, mm -hmm. you're not in my shoes, but it can be really hard. Mm -hmm. And just to be uncomfortable, you know, like I always say, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not getting better. So right. 
to put yourself out there and let somebody come get you for coffee or right. yep. be okay with crying in front of other people or mm-hmm. just have the emotions. Don't numb it. Because yep. that just makes it so much harder in the end, you know? Yeah. Do you think in those situations, you know, prior to obviously being in recovery and, ex- and going through that grief and loss, was there ever, did you ever have a moment where it's like, okay, maybe I, maybe I should stop. Like, did you ever like think of like, okay, maybe I should stop using. Maybe I should stop just yeah. doing this. Because obviously you perpetuated <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, I'll keep going. Like, I have a reason for it. Did it ever like, do you think it ever crossed your mind because of, all right, especially when it's someone who you know, you know, maybe from various places who passed because of their usage did it ever like trigger you to be like okay maybe you know maybe i should cut it out maybe i should yeah yeah i had uh, close friends that um overdosed Mm -hmm. and you'd think well i should really not keep using this but ironically it just makes you use it more and Mm -hmm. of course i had the thoughts that like i think the Second, I started using chemicals. I knew I did it different than than mm. everybody I was hanging out with, you okay. know. Yeah. And um, cause that was the only reason why I'd go. Like, is there gonna be anything there? No. Yeah, that, well, I don't want to go watch a dumb movie or something. That would be lame. So yeah. you okay. find the group. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was. I knew in my heart of hearts that it was problematic. Mm-hmm. And um, but every situation, you just like explain it away like well right. so so i wrecked that car i mean that guardrail just jumped out at me it was just crazy you know yeah. or all these different situational things but i think in your in your heart mm-hmm. you know you know i knew it was a problem i just had no idea how to live sober i right. the idea of being sober was so overwhelming and frightening mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I don't know how to keep drinking and I don't know how to live sober. It right. just felt like such a, it felt impossible, you mm-hmm. know? And then once you get into recovery, you're like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. Why yeah. did I make this such a big deal, you know? Right. But um, but it, you just feel like I'm just going to be miserable the rest of my life. Right. So. Yeah. And I think that's like, I don't, and I can try to think back on like all those different moments and all the different points of, you know, when I was using like, I don't think, I don't know if necessarily if it was like someone passing um, necessarily, I don't think it, that never really encouraged me to be like, you know, hey, maybe I should really like mm-hmm. do something different. One, because I was afraid to like, this is all I knew. Yeah. My entire adult life, literally my entire adult life was gambling, drinking, using, doing all the different yeah. things. So like, I didn't know anything different. Mm-hmm. And so then it's like, so when that happened, I was like, well, I, I cope with everything with this yeah. as you said like you know if it's if it's a good day bad day if it's just a day like you yeah. know didn't really need a reason and but it was one of those i'm like okay when bad things were happening both from people passing and you know or, or you know a lot of scares mm-hmm. like a lot of like od scares and of some close friends um who were able to recover it never like triggered me to be like hey you know what i should do something different it was always like okay no, I need to do this more. Yeah. It was yeah. always like, go, like, spend even more money, get more cash, like, take money. Like, it was always like, do yeah. do it more because this is, you know, it was like a, and I had all sorts of different excuses. It was like, tomorrow's not promised. It was like, well, you know, like, this is going to help really help you, like, get you out of this hole a lot quicker than, like, talking to somebody about yeah. it. And when people wanted to talk about it, I would push them away. Be like, nope, I got my thing. Like, yep. I'm going to go hit the tables. You know, it was like... <laughs> You know, it it never crossed my mind to, like, stop. It was always, like, no, like, do it more. Yeah. Uh, Which, just obviously, the insanity of it all was just, like, what? Like, why was that? But feelings then were so big and suffocating. It was, there was no space. It just felt like if something bad happened, then I just, you live in this Mm -hmm. darkness instead of, just feeling it like right. it's a feeling feel it and mm-hmm. then uh give it its due space and yep. you know there's light at the end of the tunnel but it just didn't it was never felt like that mm-hmm. at that time right and i think any time in my life i've had something where i wasn't 
willing to share what I was doing sure. with the people that I loved, I knew mm. instantly this is a problem and I'm going to keep it a secret because yep. if I tell them, they're going to have like suggestions. <laughs> oh, you know, I maybe you should get some help or maybe <laughs> yes. you should. What if you just bought a six pack and just had that? I'm like, well, if you buy a six pack, why even start? It's just <laughs> <Right>. useless. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt so, and then those were the times I thought, well, I'm not, I'm obviously not an addict because this putz just brought over a six pack. I didn't have any. Right. I just went to bed, you mm -hmm. know, but I just knew once you start that machine, mm -hmm. it's insatiable, you know? Yep. So it was easier just to not start it. And then I would be like, see, I'm not, Yeah. I'm not, I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. You guys have a problem. You're worried. If you just had fun, blah. <laughs> right. I remember trying to talk my mom into smoking <laughs> weed with me and I'm like mom <laughs> if you just tried it you'd love it you'd mm -hmm. be like chill and we could like laugh and whatever yeah. she's like it's illegal and I'm like that's a suggestion you know <laughs> laws are suggestions <laughs> I mean they're not but they right. were at the time yeah, yeah. anyway yep yeah, that's funny it's funny like thinking about it from that like even of like all the times I was trying to like get people to like start was like even yeah. though like, I was like, hey man, like I'm, I promise you, like I got a system, like all my systems. Yeah, oh, yeah, I had, yeah, yeah. I had systems and like things <laughs> like this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be anchored. I'm I'm gonna take care of it. You just you know, or then I would just give yeah. people like, hey, just come with me because of course misery loves company. <laughs> so yeah, especially when, sure. like when I'm like in a really really low point, I was like, oh, I want other people to be low with me. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, come on out, you know, let's let's hit the table. Because the healthy whatever. people in my life made boundaries, and now <laughs> right. they were like. I don't really want to hang out with you if you're loaded and driving yeah. or whatever. If yep. you're like, what a buzzkill, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you just find somebody who, because I assumed that everybody felt like that when they mm -hmm. used, I thought everybody, it was just like magic for everybody. Yep. And that's, turns out that's not the case. Like right. some people get, a, my mom gets a little flush mm -hmm. and she gets, whoo, I better quit. You know, like <laughs> after a glass of wine or she'll split a beer with somebody. Ew. Uh, <laughs> um, you know what I mean? But like, right. that's normal, I guess. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Hey, who'd have thought? Yep. But that was not normal for us at all. No. No. Split a beer? I'm like, why? That's a waste. I know. They put it on ice, too. It's really <laughs> awful. It's awful. <laughs> That's alcohol abuse. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I remember we, uh, my, my mother-in-law one time, we had this, like, uh, really, really nice cab. And, uh, you know, so we cab? had, like, Cabernet. Oh, I thought you yeah. meant, like, taxi. Cab. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, Cabernet. <laughs> no, I was a totally Boone's farm. I don't know Cabernet. But so. <laughs> well, we had this, like, really, really great, like, bottle of wine. And so we had put in the decanter. And so my my mother-in-law, like, you know, so we had a bunch of them out. Cause it was, like, a party. So we had a bunch of them out. So she, like, just was, like, talking it up to one of her friends. And mom was like, oh, I want to try it. So she pours herself a glass. And, again, this bottle's probably cost me, like, 160 bucks, 180 bucks, something Holy like that. Holy Yeah, it was a stupid, stupid amount of money. But, again, it was... I liked it. You didn't gamble it, so that's No, something. exactly. I was yeah. like, oh, this is better. I'll just use my winnings <laughs> on this. Then I can share I win, it with the I world. Win, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. So she pours herself a glass, tries it. Oh, this is terrible. Literally goes in the ice box, like in her mm -hmm. freezer, and grabs ice and puts ice in it. And I literally, I love my mom, mother-in-law, like with all my heart. But mm -hmm. I, I was like, I got to go downstairs. I, yeah. like, I can't. Not only did I'm I spend my like winnings on this mm -hmm. really, really, exp and at the time, really expensive bottle of wine, you're going to put ice in it yeah how d and then i was just like all pretentious and high and mighty like how dare you ruin yeah. my wine my wine right yeah, yeah right yeah all Either the things do it right or just leave, <laughs> just it, leave alone. it alone i was like yeah. no and now and then she was like and then she still didn't like it of course so then she was like trying to pot it off to my father and he doesn't really drink i mean every once in a while but like he didn't like it so i was just like no, I was like, just this. I'm gonna go downstairs. You hang out. Were with you family. married yet? Or are you still trying to impress them, or what? Still trying to impress them. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they know. Yeah. 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 We talked. I was like, look, mm -hmm. look here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the problem Here's with what your you're doing. Wine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Neither of my parents are big drinkers. My, yeah. my thing. My dad went to a. He went out with buddies to, for shots, and by the second round, he went up to the bartender. He's like. You give me Pepsi, not whiskey, in every shot from now on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just could not do it. Yeah. But so I don't know where that came from. But my mm -hmm. brother and I are successful mm -hmm. in 
um, being addicts. So yeah. anyway, sober now though, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I so I think like now, one of the best, which I'm really really grateful for, um, to kind of just tie it back in about just like feeling the feelings. Um, I'm just really grateful for that in recovery now because it definitely took a while, but even in, in recovery, like having a, a long, a lot longer of time in recovery, you know, you just, as life happens, you just mm-hmm. suffer more loss. But I feel like when loss happens now and fairly recently, a couple of months ago, um, I think it just really, it's a, it's a new place to be able to say, okay, like I'm, I'm, I'm may not be comfortable, but then I can call my sponsor, mm-hmm. like all the things that I used to do where or and all the people that I used to hang out with or, or call or, you know, just wail or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it's still the actions of what I used to do when I wasn't clean. is still the same actions that I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. Like the action itself hasn't changed the, the phone calls or, or right. I need to go. I need to go somewhere. I need to go to a thing. So now I just go to a meeting yeah. or now I go to work or now I just go to like pause or I go to the gym not often but like yeah. you know it was Healthy just like things. yeah and yeah. so it's just the choices that I make now are just positive choices that I never like it wasn't but I didn't learn how to do that no it was just like I just stopped going to the casino I stopped going to you know play blackjack I just stopped like you know I had to stop watching like sports games that I would normally like bet on like I just had to stop all of that but I didn't necessarily learn to like choose to replace it with something better it was just like no this is what you do right this is what you do when you're happy this is when you do when you're sad yeah and so when i'm really really sad and when i'm really really happy then i, I go to a meeting i just it just was like off and on yeah, yeah i know and, and so, yeah. i think any, any when you're chemi- chemically dependent or have an addiction you have a gift yeah. of making everything about me like mm-hmm. if something sad happened or if someone passed away close to me i made that about me and that's not just while I was using that's well into recovery oh my gosh and um and to get into recovery and then have a sponsor say why don't you help somebody else you know and it was just like this novel idea are we talking about grief and loss yeah Yeah. here you go (laughs) have a puppy there's a puppy are we on facebook yes what did you do? <laughs> did you get a dog while Christy's gone? <gasps> no. <laughs> You're dead. No, no, she got no, no puppy. Yeah, oh, Christy okay, got all right, all right. <laughs> while I was gone. Yep. Okay, that's fine. She's still alive. Yep. So yeah. I, but look at that face. I know. She, we, yeah. So what's, we have a new puppy. What's her name? Lucy. Lucy. I call her Aww. Lulu. Yep. So for those in the radio, we have a, is it a, it's not no what is it it's just a puppy just a puppy it's a white dog (laughs) no baby you want to get one to get down oh Oh my gosh but those on facebook that makes the day better yeah Yeah. sorry the radio that's a cute Mm -hmm. puppy yeah it's a it's an all-white dog Mm -hmm. but that's how you process grief and loss right that's how you make people like you when you come in a room (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah we've got i got some uh guys that are like single guys and they're all like wanting to Walk around with this puppy. Oh, yeah, chicks. But, oh, chicks yeah. dig pit bulls. They do oh. like the dog, but they realize it's connected to the dude. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's not like, oh, you tricked me. Yeah. You know? Pit bulls are like the felons of dogs. So <laughs> if they, they're they stigmatized even when they don't, when they're yeah. not even doing anything bad. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. Like that movie or that show, Pitbull and Por- Parolees. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that mm-hmm. show? Uh uh-uh. uh. What's it on? Are you serious? Uh uh-uh. uh. They train. Is that's when they train the dogs, I'm right? Judging. <laughs> Maybe he I mean, I know it's cool. about it's about like I know uh, it's a show. It's like I, people who just get out of prison go yeah. and work at a dog shelter, what? and it's mostly pit bulls. Yeah, and so they call it pit bull and parolees, and they like like help these dogs what's it on what network i don't even know if it's still on actually oh. so we'll maybe, maybe discovery I'm a smart a one early. i don't yeah. know discovery or documentary mm-hmm. one. yeah huh. so. i mean i knew that was a program but i didn't know that was like a tv show about it yeah yeah, yeah that's cool put the castaways together mm-hmm. and then they yeah. you know the happy castaways. and you know like the felons and pit bulls and okay <laughs> then they build each other up and it's yeah. a success story and everybody's happy it's beautiful yeah 
So right now we're talking about uh, processing. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Got to do the eye roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, processing grief and loss now that you're in recovery. Oh. What's that like? It sucks. Still? It still sucks. Mm-hmm. So, yep. I That's mean, real talk. at least when you're... There's no there's no silver lining to being drunk all the time. <laughs> but it, <laughs> you know, well, I don't know. I like but, where you go with this. But yeah. at least, you know, like, I mean, part of the reason that I drank and did drugs or whatever was to numb. Yeah. You know, and so I didn't really have to deal per se on it uh, when I was still drinking or whatever because I just pushed it off, pushed it off, yeah. pushed it off. And so then when I got sober and all the feelings were like, insanely more intense than they normally are it just seemed those were the harder times to stay sober and so i don't know have you guys ever heard of that the thing with like buffalo or or the bison or whatever how they run into the storm Mm -hmm. as a herd or whatever Mm -hmm. it's kind of i mean i think with grief and loss it almost has to be like that you just have to throw yourself into it and just accept it and you know really rely on your network and friends and go to a lot of meetings and you know <clears throat> get out of your head as much as possible because if you sit in there like a so like a like a, a head with no substance and just pure intensified like grief and loss mm-hmm. can be a really really bad place to be mm-hmm. i there's probably just as many people who've taken their life sober as there has been that are using there's probably more yeah because at least you don't have the medicine at least anymore. Yeah, yeah at least when you were using yep. you can you can you know i've said multiple times i think that alcohol has prevented a has prevented me For from sure. yeah. uh completing suicide yeah so. yeah it was a relief somewhat yeah it could mm-hmm. be i mean it was like a you know i don't know what to call it it <laughs> it was a temporary relief yeah. release or yep. whatever for the night but then you'd still have to wake up the next one so it's just like a cycle Compounded, right? yeah you know <clears throat> when you're sober if you don't do anything about it it's not a cycle it's just a long right. it's just it's linear mm-hmm. of of dealing with that grief instead of having little bits of relief you just it doesn't go away right well i think but that was the difficulty of like trying to talk to people who aren't in recovery through either especially through grief and loss because at least as an addict i knew what i can choose i knew what i could do yeah in recovery i still know what i can do mm-hmm. you know like i i could have the choice but sometimes i feel like those who don't maybe they're processing <laughs> grief and loss don't necessarily know what to do like they don't yeah. have that coping mechanism because they sure. you don't you know they've never had picked anything yeah. so sometimes oh. it's difficult to try to figure out like I'm what nursing. to do are you depressed? <laughs> yes. That's all better. Yep. Get a little puppy. <laughs> yeah. That's, they're cute. There's probably and then more they, puppies oh. that get bought during depression. Oh, I'm sure. Than anytime. Yeah. Cause look at I'm that face. I'm not depressed, though. Yeah. So. And then they poop on your floor, and then you get more depressed. And I can deal with poop and pee, because we, we have a carpet cleaner. And oh. that thing is super cool, and I like using it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I can't deal with shoes. Oh, I can't deal with the chewing of the mm-hmm. shoes. Oh, I got on Archie one time. I'll get out time. of grief and loss real quick when I come home and see my shoes all shoot up. I uh-huh. straight anger. Oh, yeah. Well, Archie did shoes that one time. Shoot up. And I was That's... like, nope, I'm not having this anymore. Because I can't, especially not my shoes. Oh, no. You can chew on Justin's shoes. Not chewing on mine. No, we had, we had one dog, and she got old and passed away, and I'm never doing that again because that was grief. Holy smokes. Mm-hmm. That was, was so sad. Yep. I don't oh, want to do that again, yeah. <laughs> and it turns out my husband's allergic to dogs, so he had oh, a headache perfect. for 13 years and just dealt and with it. Uh, I just thought he was faking it, so. But <laughs> of course. Turns out <laughs> uh, Turns out a dog allergy is real. Yeah. But uh it does ironically when you're going through something in recovery and I guess I've been around long enough to know that, like, after this dark place, mm-hmm. I'm going to understand life better. I might be, I might feel more spiritually connected. Mm-hmm. I will be in a better place. Yep. I just have to make it through this part. And it never made sense to me. When I first started going to meetings and they said, get a sponsor, I'm like, fine, <laughs> you know, whatever. I don't know how that benefits me. but. Right. And then I remember telling her, like, um, something dramatic that was going on, like, mm-hmm. like I 
owe everybody all the money oh my or gosh, whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. And she said, well, go greet people at the door. And I thought, did you not just hear me? I right. thought you were a sponsor and she's supposed to fix this. Yep. And uh, it's exactly what I need every time I get in a place where the feelings are overwhelming is I need to go get out of my head. I need to help mm-hmm. somebody else. Because whatever I'm moping around about, it's, I can be changed, but I can um, put a little bit of good energy out there and it seems to fill your soul and mm-hmm. just make things a lot easier. I mean, those bills didn't get paid for years and years, but <laughs> yeah. you know, if I was overwhelmed by it, mm-hmm. I would have quit AA altogether and been like, this crap does not work. Right. Um, but... I started going to a job when I was scheduled. Like I worked like five whole days in a row. Wow, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, it's just about getting out of me. The more I think of me, the bigger my problems get. But mm. I am my a favorite topic of mine. So yeah, yeah. And we seem to go one way or the other, just kind of like oh, like absolutely. Freud's like definition of ego, where you got the id and the super ego. One is like super immature and like impulsive, and the other one's like super legalistic and I'll follow all the rules. <laughs> right. And, then, and you're supposed to, your ego is supposed to be like, well, we need to make a compromise and balance between the two, but it's just like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm going to disappear <laughs> and just let these two like to make decisions. And then we get like super hypocritical about it, uh-huh. you know, because we'll see people not following the rules and we don't, but then it, like they're, yeah. should you know, be fair, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Blah. Like, how well, dare you? cross over the line without mm-hmm. using your blinker mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and then we you know speed through a red light right right it's right. just not the the same but it's different but it's the same right right so <laughs> <laughs> well i have a good reason yeah and i'm sure they didn't so yeah right. so what well, well I don't know. It's never going to be easy with grief and loss or whatever. We mm-hmm. just have to find. <laughs> He's like, stay here. <laughs> Puppy. See you later, dude. <clears throat> we, had a vi- uh, we had a sneaky visitor that you guys don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Lucy. Yep. Lucy's not the sneaky visitor. No. Obviously, you're here. There was another. The there was a person in here, mm-hmm. and I posted on my Facebook today that I had a hint to an update. Ooh. And so if you saw that and then you were asking questions about it, we had a a hint in here, but we didn't show you. He was a sneaky visitor <laughs> to come and observe things. Mm-hmm. So a lot of cool, lot of cool we'll stuff. We'll keep happened. you in suspense. Mm-hmm. His background was also all white all the time. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> we're going to be in a blizzard or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's coming. Uh. <laughs> well, what's something dumb you've done during grief and loss? <laughs> oh, uh, mm, I don't know. I, something dumb. I'm trying to think. Done a lot of dumb things during a lot of things. Yeah. I usually got. I don't know. Yeah, I, I quit work. I quit. Relationship. Yeah, yeah or something. that always fixes Making everything. decisions during grief and loss is a horrible idea. Yep. Yep. I've quit jobs. I've quit relationships. I just, I'm a quitter. I, I'm. I'm okay to say that. But like, yeah, when I'm in like that <laughs> low of place, I'm just all of a sudden it's like disconnect, like pulling cords. It's just like, yep, powering down, powering it all down. But it never, I mean, but then yeah. my process was like, okay, if I could just quit all these things because I know my, and as Adam was talking about in that extreme, my extreme mind was like, okay, we'll just shut everything down, close it all down so that way you can just, you know, take your life. Yeah, because it was like it was so low, and I would just get in this such a deep place that I would just like cut everybody off, isolate myself, because then I'm like, okay, well then if I have no connections, if no one cares about me, because I just burn them all down, right. then I can go ahead and successfully transition. Nobody cares. Yeah, well, they don't know. know what's going on. Yep. And you never said, and, mm-hmm. and then I can I just be just be done. And then because I'm like, I wouldn't in my mind, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, you know, um, complete you know, taking my life. If I still had a girlfriend, if I still had a job, if mm-hmm. I still had, you know, well, I may do it with bills. <laughs> I would very much, but like all those like meaningful yeah. things or like if I had a, a good church home, nope, I'm cutting that off. I'm sending them an email saying, hey, I no longer attend this church. And that's what I did. Like I was just like constantly just like, w- what all can I like 
close out before I transitioned to that. Obviously, yeah. I didn't because I'm still here, but that was always, I was like, yep, pull them. You back. actually like thought about it, like thought it through? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just completely destroyed everything without thinking about it. Oh. Like it was, it yeah, wasn't right, like right. I sat there and was like, oh, I need to, I need to detach or whatever. It was yeah. just like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't see it till it's over, and yeah. then you're like, "Whoa, that got dark." And then you got to go back and like make amends, maybe. Yeah, you know. Well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how well you want to be, but <laughs> sometimes I like being right for yeah. a while. Yeah. Do oh. you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Yep. That's always been my, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, kind of the the with... difference in the ego, like mm-hmm. the, between the two. Do you want to be like happy and like, or do you want to be right? Yep, right. That's the constant battle in my head. Mm-hmm. I want to be both. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I want to be right and happy. And just should be happy. Uh, wrong and happy. Yeah. That doesn't even sound nice. Then it's somebody nice. else's. <laughs> then it's like, oh, I was wrong. You do it. Mm. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were wrong and I'm happy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew that. I already I don't knew that. I don't think that's where she was going with that. <laughs> I think the scariest thing, for myself anyway, is that I paint the picture that everything is fine and I mm. tell people everything is fine and I do all the things you're supposed to do to look like a functioning adult and then just kind of die on the inside. But you don't see it till afterwards and then it's like, holy crap, how did yeah. I get there? Yeah. I was pretty healthy at one time, but yeah. Then you have to like deal with like the 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 damage, mm-hmm. right? And it's like you get more depressed about the damage yeah. that was caused during the time that you were yeah. grieving or you some, you lost or you know because of the way you talked to somebody, the way you didn't I show know. up to work or whatever. There's more damage. It's kind of like like drinking isn't wrong. It's the stuff that I did while I was drinking. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with like grief and loss. Like grief and loss is very normal yeah but the things that i do during that time can be very damaging and trying to seem fine is exhausting when you're not Mm -hmm. fine you know to like paint this picture of i am just a little behind at work or you know what i mean i just maybe i don't answer my phone ever anymore at all or whatever you know Mm -hmm. hide in the garage or it's all for a good reason but Mm -hmm. you just kind of fade away and then afterwards uh, afterwards, when you're sharing it with people, they're like, I had no idea. Like, yeah. well, that's because mm-hmm. I did that right. I'm a good liar, I guess. Right. That was that was the point. You wouldn't have known. Yeah. If you did know, I still wouldn't have been better, but at least I would have been caught. Yeah. But because I wasn't caught, then I just kept going. Yep. In all the ways. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder to be like when you do something dumb and... Uh, when you're drunk and you could just be like, Oh, I was drunk. Yeah. I was blacked out. You do it while you're like grieving and going through some loss. They're just like, that guy's a prick. (laughs) Like there's no excuse. They probably think the same thing when you're drinking, but at least there's a little bit of an excuse. Right. Right. You know, like, yeah, I can't believe I sent all those text messages last night. Sorry, bro. And, but you do it while you're grieving and losing Uh or whatever. People are just like, it depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. If it's death, Mm. People are usually pretty like, ah, I'm just going to give him some time. I'm yeah. not going to respond or I should check in on him. Mm-hmm. But if it's just, you know, some, I don't know, it could have been anything else that you're grieving. I mean, loss doesn't just have to be death. It can be loss of a job, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like your whole security just went out the window. Yes. Yeah. You know, a yeah. loss of your, your, you know, having your kid at home. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It could be any of those things. And yep. people will just see, oh, like, oh, he must not be a good person if he lost his kid. Right. Yeah. And or whatever. Right. So I think a lot of times we just forget that everyone just imagine all the stuff that you deal with. Everyone else is, too. Right. right. Yeah. And yep. don't it's, ignore it. No. Like, talk to people about it. Don't give them so much space. They sink all by themselves. You know, mm-hmm. um, I remember being sad and my girlfriends would they just show up at my house and I think, oh, this is awful why i don't even want to see any people but they just come in and be like we're having coffee and mm-hmm. i'm gonna love you till you can love yourself again and and that's the beauty of having a fit creating a fellowship in in recovery and letting people get to know you and asking about them and and um helping them out when they're in a tough spot or just screwing around you know what mm-hmm. i mean like enjoying the good times too but 
those are meaningful relationships. The ones where you can ask or you say like, hey, heard you got canned again. How you doing? You know, mm-hmm. that's uh, <laughs> like, it's not a, you're going to have to surprise them with it. They already know, you know. Yeah. So it's just nice that somebody is thinking. I think people genuinely, like, genuinely want to talk about those things that really hurt or whatever, but they want to talk to the people that they want to talk to yeah. about it. And usually it's people who are, I don't know, they're kind of judgy or kind of crappy that want to talk about it, you know, because it's just like... They have suggestions. Yeah, they have suggestions. <laughs> and I think sometimes are. people are sadist about that kind of stuff mm-hmm. or whatever, where it's just like in a micro yeah. kind of way or whatever, where they're like, I know we don't have that great of a relationship, but I think we should talk about this. And mm-hmm. it's like... Why? Where did I input you into my life? Right. You know why this went wrong? Because of you. Like, <laughs> right. well, thank you. I uh-huh. figured that out already. You should probably make better decisions, yeah. <laughs> Adam. Well, no crap, bro. <laughs> like, we are, we're already that, to that point. <laughs> right. So, do you want to help with that or just beat me up? <laughs> no. No. They just want to be nosy. Yeah. So. But speaking of community, uh, you're listening Hey-o. to Hey-o. Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 KRFF. This is F5 Recovery Radio. This is your co-host, Juan Pretty Ricky, with Kirsten Hoovenen, Adam Martin. But we want to just make a special ask to our business owners, managers, and other nonprofit organizations. If you are considering advertising, please learn what underwriting is for a nonprofit community radio station like Radio Free Fargo. If you'd like to learn more, please contact them at their website, RadioFreeFargo.org, or their profile on Facebook. Let the listeners know that you support community radio by supporting this community radio station, 95.9. So just mm-hmm. so everybody on Facebook knows, yeah. all four of you right now, we did have like 35 people yeah. at the time watching, but we lost power. And so now we're I'm doing the Facebook Live from our my phone, and but we're back on the radio. So anyways, Weird. what we were talking about was the, yeah. the tragedy that happened here on... What day was that? It was like Friday. three. It was five, it was on Friday mm-hmm. uh, with the police officers, the fallen officer, the the citizen who mm-hmm. was also in critical condition. Yep. So, and that's partly why we're talking about grief and loss today because that was a big. That was cr- dude. I was at my house, and a guy, a guy, a door to door salesman, came to my house. Oh, right. Wow. I have the video of uh, of him coming to my house because of our ring doorbell. Yeah. And so I answered the door, and, and he was from, like, L- Lithuania or something, mm. you know? Yeah. I don't know. And he was just, like, trying to sell me children's books. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I started oh, yeah. hearing sirens, right? Like a crescendo, or is yeah. that the right word? Mm-hmm. And it was, like, really small at first, and then all of a sudden, it just sounded like there was hundreds. Yeah. While I was staying, because I live not that far from 25th Street, not far. I mean, I live quite a ways from where it happened. And it was like, I got scared because I was like, man, that's a lot of sirens, like mm-hmm. right by my house. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I got it. And then I had to go out of town and I was in the car. And then all of a sudden it's like 25th Street, officer down. Oh, yep. my gosh. And I was like, oh, not far from awful. my house. And then mm-hmm. I was like texting people. I was like, I think I should come back. And they're like, no, it's, it's you know, or whatever. Yep. I was like, but it was scary. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know what was going on. It was right. Scary. Yeah. I can't imagine. It's what still scary. It just doesn't like, happen here. And so no, it doesn't. Right. Then you think, like, do you do you let your kids go to the park? Do you, you know, you think about all these things that maybe is being dramatic, but mm-hmm. it it just seems so foreign. Like, just anyway, yeah. we're not used to that, which is a good thing. Yeah. It, well, yeah, you know. So, yeah, our team it kind of shook our team, mm-hmm. you know, and so. And I can't imagine, you know, the officer that passed away or died uh, was 23. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Like, my son Ugh. is 24. I couldn't imagine. Like I, I would, Like, I had a kid when I was, like, 18, and I look right. at my kid, and he's 23. I'm like, thank God mm-hmm. he doesn't have a kid yet, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, not that I don't think he could, he could pivot and, like, become a good dad or whatever. It's like, yep. he's just so young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I saw the videos of, of Jake... Um, you know, when he was doing his trainings and his mm-hmm. interviews and stuff, and I was like, this is just a kid. Yep. No matter how mature he was, because he was super mature for his, like, for a 23-year-old. Yeah, for real. Being a Fargo police officer. Right. Like, I, there's not many 23-year-olds that get out of bed. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, on time. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy's, like, 
protecting and serving our community. Yep. You know, there's it's it definitely will it could go into your mindset like, man, all the good ones go. Mm-hmm. And it's a dangerous job. It's a super dangerous job. Yep. No matter what lo- city you're in, mm-hmm. like yeah, it's probably more dangerous to be in North Minneapolis as a police officer than in sure. Chicago. Yep. But it's still dangerous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether you're in Langdon, North Dakota, or you know, because I mean, even the shootout that happened back in what what's town uh, was it? Scott always talks about it. Yeah. Oh. Um, but that happened in a small town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it, it can happen anywhere. Right. God, where was that? Mm-hmm. Well, we want anyway. we want to take you know a moment and just thank the you know Fargo Police and you know West Fargo Police, Cass County Sheriff's Department, Fargo, you know Fire, West Fargo Fire, everybody who you know Sanford, everybody, ambulance drivers, first responders, you know. For responding you know that day and with our you know deepest deep deepest our deepest uh sympathy for the family you know of uh officer jake you know who died on the scene and then all the officers uh there's a bunch of gofundmes going around and so i think if you go to valley news live or whatever they've posted m- the majority of them mm-hmm. please help support you know all those families um, that they're going to have crazy hospital bills. Mm-hmm. They're going to have funeral costs and stuff. And all they did was show up to protect the rest of us. So please, uh, if you can, support them. Yep. Yeah. And to keep checking on people a month from now or two, yeah. you know what I mean, yep. when the all the, the sensation you know, is gone. Is gone and yep. then, you know, that's still a painful time. But everybody goes on with their life as they... As they should, but it's just good to keep checking on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, as life continues, sensation dies down, you know, all the different things. But that, I mean, still doesn't mean there's not going to be more loss yeah. or more grief. There's not going to be more things that are happening that if someone's not processing what just happened, yeah, then if that's still there and then another loss happens, another grief, you know, things just, you know, tiny little rocks yeah. just keep piling on top of each other. It's just going to become bigger and bigger and harder and harder so i think that obviously that was a great just even just a thought to really really make sure that you're doing what you can to process and work through everything that you have happening yeah with this situation if it directly involved you or if you just know someone if you know someone on the force or how you know we're all connected yeah especially in our community uh, which i love i love about our community that we're all connected but really really make sure that you can do what you can to really process through that process through that grief and process through all the loss and and feel all the feels and do everything you can to do that because there will be more um and that's not to say you know something to be sad about or be like oh you know like tragedy happens every day and it's not on the front page you know like those people also need Mm -hmm. you know the same care and and uh, if you're in recovery and you just feel stuck with it and feel overwhelmed or paralyzed with the feelings, do the meeting. Go and help mm-hmm. someone else. Mm-hmm. Like, just get out of your head. Uh, talk to other people in recovery. It just, yeah, it makes a difference between being able to stay sober through stuff like that right. or just being so paralyzed with it. You just, you are desperate to shut it off, you right. know? So that's scary. Mm-hmm. And then that makes it worse and worse and worse, and you know. carries and continues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, we want to just thank, of course, everyone. We still have a couple more minutes left on the show, but we just want to um, just thank everyone for just always listening and tuning in on this show. We know today's, obviously we had some, some laughs as we always do, but um, we just de- definitely don't want to take lightly the situation that happened here in Fargo on Friday. Um, but we des- definitely don't want to take, you know, take lightly anything that anyone is processing through and is working through. So if you have other grief, other loss, um, if you're connected with us on Facebook or on Instagram or any socials, or you have our numbers, please, please reach out to any, any one of us. Or if you have other people that you prefer to reach out to, please make sure that you're just reaching out to people. Um, this is a really, and I, I say this very personally because obviously, as I shared, I like to isolate. Um, this is if you are feeling those feelings that one of the worst decisions is to isolate yourself and to become a recluse. Um, that's, you know, can lead to a lot of very dangerous things. 
Um, so we just want to make sure that you please just stay connected one way or another. True, genuine connection, not just, mm-hmm. you know, liking people's things on Facebook. Like true, genuine, in-person, face-to-face, virtual, however you need to do yeah. it, connections. Because those are the type of things that help you live. Yeah. And help you carry on another day. Even if it doesn't feel like you can carry on another day. Right. We're just, It'll be uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, for sure. We're just happy that you're alive. We're happy that yeah. you're here. Happy that you're listening. You know. Some days I pick Netflix and self-pity. I just pick it. Yep. Like, I'm going to do that today. Eat my bonbons. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow, it'll be different. You know what yep. I mean? So just forgive yourself for having whatever days you have. Mm-hmm. And there's always, there's always, like my mom always said, there is always, it can always get better. It can always get better. Mm-hmm. No matter how bad it is, it can always get better. Right. I think she was afraid I was unstable. So she kept telling me that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a place of love, like, oh, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it, it can get better, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out I can't commit her, so. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's awesome. Adam, anything <laughs> you want to share in the last couple minutes? I'm no longer taking ADHD medication. Oh, <laughs> Why? Why did you do that? I'm doing Facebook Live so I can be transparent. Right. Because mm-hmm. probably no one's listening. <laughs> oh, I am. And yeah, I'd like uh, to know why. <laughs> uh, well, so here's here's the two minutes. I love just being like super impulsive the last two minutes. And then people are like, oh, my God, tune in next week. I know. It was... <laughs> You were less yeah. Impulsive so there was two. Know. There was like two. <laughs> there's two things. Ugh. Like there's the pros and cons of it. Uh, are oh Travis here? <laughs> he saw the dog. Oh no. <laughs> um. Uh. It was like I was getting a ton of work done. Yeah. And then people would come to my office and I just stare at them. Mm-hmm. Be like I'm busy. Like that, yeah. I'm important, seriously. Yeah, like, but I w- it was just like, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Like, mm. people were, like, walking on their eggshells around me on medication. Weird. I know. It was like, it totally slowed me down and hyper-focused on a variety of things. Mm. But, like, no relationships. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so then I stopped taking it about two weeks ago. Didn't tell anybody about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then people are like, man, I don't know what's going on. This last couple of weeks, you've been just super friendly. And, like... <laughs> And attentive, and 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 then the other half is like, man, you really got to get some stuff done, Adam. Yeah, yeah, well, I know, <laughs> but look like at all the stuff the you've done. You can have personality, yeah, and hang out with me, and we can have fun, or and hire I can somebody get a bunch to do the other stuff. stuff done, yeah, have somebody else do it. Is has security and stable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, their fear will have them yeah. doing those tasks. So, <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, so yeah. anyways. I talked to my doctor. Yeah. And you weren't just it, like it done. It wasn't like I'm done. Yeah. All right. So That's smart. Make sure that if you're considering getting on medication or off medication, you talk to a doctor. Yes. And get second opinions if needed or whatever. Because yes. it's a big life changing deal. Absolutely. To start, you know, taking a medication. So, yeah. especially ADHD hmm. medication, it's a stimulant. Yep. And for some people who are like addicts and alcoholics or whatever, it could be very triggering to using meth. Right. Or right. Whatever. You know, and there's a very small number of people who that, you know, who can do that, right? right? Okay. And it actually enhances their quality of life, which it did in certain aspects yeah. for me. It's got to be then, a personal thing, but yeah, it's, it's a, could personal. be a slippery slope for sure. Yeah. So cool. I got to go get rid of this dog. Have a good day. Okay. <laughs> well, this is <laughs> F5 Recovery Radio. This is one pretty Ricky, <laughs> Kirsten Hoovenen, Adam Martin. Thank you again oh, so, so God. very much for tuning in. Uh, We wish you nothing but the best and hope you have an amazing, amazing day in recovery.